Hi, I'm Steve Houston. Welcome to another life drawing session. This time we want to draw like crazy as always, but we're going to focus on making every shape count. Every shape you put down this time, make it unique, make it fit into the figure, but make it something special. Give it some personality. Let's get started. Okay, we'll do the right side. Now for some of you this can be intimidating, nothing, nothing tougher than drawing the human figure. So go slow, take your time, don't feel like you have to get as much done as I do or maybe you get twice as much done as I do. Go at your pace, what makes you comfortable, how much can, can you get down and have it still speak to the issue, speak to what you're seeing there, not just throwing down marks but marks that have meaning, we're mark makers, we're uh, we're uh, writers of truth here. These marks are words on the page. They're thoughts for our audience to experience. And we want them to be right on some level. Maybe not exactly the proportion, but the energy. Maybe not uh, as much of the energy, but the uh, solidity. You know, what it, whatever it is, that's what we're after and we just do as much as we can. Okay. If you're confused by a pose, sometimes poses will, will just uh, beat you up. You go, I don't know how to start that. Rewind this, draw it six or eight times. See how I did it? Go to uh, other s tutorials, see how other people did it. And uh, you can work through that. Or if you're beginning, you want to build up your confidence and maybe you'll avoid some of those more difficult conditions, poses. You want to build some success so you're not feeling too beat up by some of this stuff. It's tough. Nothing easy about drawing the figure. And uh, you want to make sure that you're, uh, you're uh, being tender and not uh, getting too bruised up.
Yes. Notice I'm drawing through to find those connections there. And come back a little darker on top to um, mark them out. All right, two minutes on this series. More time, more care. Give each shape a little more personality. Make each shape a little more complete. In one minute, so oftentimes we never even got to the shape. Now we won't get to all the shapes, but the major and maybe most of the secondary shapes will um, give more integrity to structurally or more dynamics to gesturally. We'll add some secondary d detail to uh, make sure the connectivity is happening the way I want it or the way you want it. And we're going to hope that that's different on some level, that you have a, a voice that is unique to you. That's where we're going to go eventually, but at the beginning we'll start with the commonalities as we learn. What makes a good figure drawing academically? What's well, going to be how things flow? Here's the flowing lines. Notice those always go down the long axis. And then it's going to see how things fit. Notice the fit has pinches, corners. And then if we have the time, it'll be the dimension, the coming out of the picture plane, the volume wrapping around, maybe the tricep wrapping around the tube of that arm. The architecture, that's the corners, how it goes around the form. his sideburns, his hairstyle. It gets hard to see sometimes the dark hair against the dark background. So if you can't see it, don't draw it. Let it fade out. Do what you can. You're not going to stress about not getting that tenth toe or that other leg or notice I draw several light lines until I have a sense of where it is, and then I might come back and anchor that, darken it so we can feel my final um choice.
Notice energy trumps uh, structure. The, the gesture stru trumps the structure. It's not real solid structure here at all, but we're feeling the, the movement, that long axis movement that gives us what we really want, how things flow together or how things pinch apart. What those things are exactly is less interesting, or your imagination as the audience will, will do the work for me. I don't have to give you all the specifics. You'll do that. And that, that's a fun way to go, let the audience participate. So in uh, a couple minutes, maybe I'm just going to draw this hand. Have these really beautiful hands behind his back. Tying all that stuff together in a couple minutes is pretty tough going. So maybe I'll just uh, take the few minutes to draw a part. Quite often we get into these sketch classes and we uh, say, well, we have five minutes, two minutes, ten minutes, an hour, or whatever it is. And we only get a certain uh, amount of uh, into the drawing, into the figure. We analyze the basic rib cage shape and some of the big shapes, but we never get to the fingers. How is a thumb different than a finger? How is a finger different than a toe? How does a hand articulate exactly? How do those shadow patterns work across those knuckles, those bulging knuckles? Uh, those kind of things, we never get a chance to analyze. And so when we have our big momentous rendering, we, uh, we're confused on the detail. What do we do with that stuff? Because we've never spent any time on it. So some of your drawing, just do body parts. Just do every fifth drawing, do a hand if you're bad at hands. Or do a female pelvis if you're bad at that. Or a nose in underneath perspective. And work out the logistics. What's the language being used? You know, it's a, these are all characters in a story, and each character is similar to the other characters but distinctly different from those characters in important ways. Find those commonalities and those divergences and have fun with them. Okay. enough of that arm because that's going to be the kind of main bit in this let's say. So I gave it a little bit of structure and even a little bit of rendering. All right, five minutes. Now, in five minutes, I can do a much better do job constructing this figure. But maybe I'll just take this uh, beautifully dynamic torso, this, this 
twisting like it's wringing out a wet towel. And just spend five minutes on that. So sometimes I'll just pick a couple major forms, two, three major forms, and work out how they, the architecture, how they construct and how they fit together, their dynamic relationship. So sketch classes are designed not to teach you to draw faster. That'll happen as you get more confident with your tools and confident with your subject matter. But they're really designed to, f to make you make choices, to edit, to make decisions, because all those things are going to make you reduce the subject matter down to the essential elements, what has to be there to say a athletic young man in a certain dynamic pose, as opposed to an old woman in a, in a uh, more placid pose, working out that stuff. But also it's going to be where your style is, because your choices are going to be different than my choices. And that's the beauty of it. That's why we go to uh, both our art openings. We want to see how both artists made decisions, chose the subject matter, chose the poses, the medium, the color palette, the uh, detailed style or the simple design, the, th the glory of the paint or the, uh, the illusion of the real, whatever it is. You're, all those things are going to be different from artist to artist, or at least they better be, or else you've seen one show, you've seen them all. So the sketch technique, which is a West Coast American technique, is uh, where I know it from, but it's all any, any uh, um, tradition that has it, the Impressionists will have it too, where you're capturing something before it's gone, that moment in time, that splash of light on the mountainside, that kind of stuff. The sketch technique is oftentimes mistaken. We think, oh, we just have to draw really fast to get all that stuff done. No. Sketch technique is there so that you'll put just a few things in, but they'll be the most important things. You'll be discriminating. You'll tell us out of all that mountainside or all those mountainous muscles, what are the few things, the 12 things that really say it all? That's the beauty of the sketch technique. And then you take other times, more of an atelier style, East Coast American style, an academy style around the world, and you can work out all of the process, technique, tradition, and uh, detailed information that that realist or stylistic tradition you're working in demands. But uh, the beauty of this is you're going to edit. You're going to leave most things out. Go back and look at your favorite artists. Don't look at what they put in. Think about what they left out. What's left out of Rembrandt shadows? What's left out of Sargent portraits? What's left out of uh, Vermeer environments? Or Vuillard domestic settings? tie in a little bit of this other stuff back into it to see, start to see how the connections happen between those bigger forms. Yeah, you know, I'm never going to get to this. That's okay. I'm never going to get to this. That's okay. There's no finish line here. You're not uh, in a race. You're not in a competition. Just to enjoy it when it works, when you find a truth. Forgive yourself when you screw it up because you're going to be miserable if you don't do a lot of forgiving in your art. So most of this uh, torso is in shadow that we're drawing right now. That's a problem. How do you do detail in shadow? 
Well, the easiest way is to do it, keep it linear. You might do this whole drawing in line, but if you're, uh, then it's not an issue. But if you're adding light and shadow patterns, any detail that you put in the shadow, if you're doing a sketch and you don't have the time to render it, to, to work out the reflected light and all the that uh, maddening difficulty that that suggests, then just make it linear. So for example, let's say this whole uh, head and face, except for that little bit of nose, is in shadow. So I'm just going to draw a line for the eyelashes, maybe a couple lines together, eyebrow, ear, Always looking for the biggest possible shapes. Notice that chest and shoulder area makes a big egg together. Not a perfect egg at all, but it's, it's suggestive of the egg, and so we can go with that as a simple yet characteristic choice. Not to be the shoulders, but to replace them. In other words, my idea about that shoulder girdle is it's just a big egg. That gives me control over it. So I'm not copying this figure. I'm translating it. That's why you're, you might be willing to spend thousands and tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars on a piece of art is because it translates the world and by doing so gives it meaning. So that leg's coming out at me, so I need that end of the thigh. I'm going to do that whole, not the knee cap, that whole knee structure. You can see kind of that bulging box idea. Notice how the highlight on that thigh runs along the corner of that box concept. That's construction when the detail tracks the simple concept that we've given that uh, really very complex form. The quadriceps are complex series of muscles and tendons and bone showing through at times. And uh, we've reduced it down into a boxy idea. We've translated it and now we have some control over it, hopefully a lot of control over it. Control over how it looks, how it's rendered, and for our audience what it means potentially. There can be a whole philosophy behind the boxiness of life, the boxiness of a thigh. It can be a, um, a parable, an allegory, a morality tale, a political call to arms, whatever. Art has power because it attaches meaning takes the world that may have no context and gives it a great and powerful context. And it starts with sketching, putting a tube or a box instead of a shape, putting a series of marks and lines rather than tissue and muscle, giving it emotion rather than just plain anatomy. 
If you're getting discouraged, you feel like this is too advanced for you because it's a, when you're working from a figure like this, it's intermediate level oftentimes. If you need a little bit more foundational advice on how to begin, maybe even uh, simpler subjects to work with, with the figure, come to the new Masters Academy website. We have a lot of content for all levels. So I hope you're drawing all week long. I'll see you next time and good luck.